Hi, it's Dwyer of DwyerCrime.blog. It is Saturday, July 23rd, 2022. Let's continue our discussion of the Kennedy assassination. But first, remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, as longtime viewers know, I don't believe there's any chance that Lee Harvey Oswald would have been convicted of President John F. Kennedy's assassination. Right? There are just too many problems. One of them is the fact that several medical professionals at Parkland Hospital saw an exit wound, a huge hole, in the back of President Kennedy's head, right? That's very hard to reconcile with the autopsy photos. If the shots did not come from the back, then Lee Harvey Oswald was not the trigger man who killed President Kennedy, right? Understand too, there are a host of other problems. I've dealt with some of them in other videos. This video is going to talk about a unique problem, one that, quite frankly, would crater the prosecution. It's a problem involving Lee Harvey Oswald's wallet. Now, understand, if you're representing Lee Harvey Oswald, what you want is the prosecution to turn on itself. You want members of law enforcement, detectives, police officers, to contradict each other, to cast doubt on how the evidence was collected, to cast doubt on where they found the evidence. Now, if you're like me, if you recall Oliver Stone's JFK movie, the folklore is that Lee Harvey Oswald, with money on him, decides not to pay for the movies at the Texas Theater, right? He goes into the Texas Theater. Someone from a shoe store that he had ducked into earlier goes over to the Texas Theater, talks to the clerk. The clerk calls the police. The shoe, sto the shoe salesman then goes into the theater with policemen and, of course, in the dark is able to point out Lee Harvey Oswald and the cops descend, arrest him. Now, what I want to do, because I want to leave no ambiguity here, <clears throat> let's be clear on what the government's version of the facts is. What I want to do here is I want to refer to volume 24 of the Warren Commission, page 234. Again, it's volume 24, page 234. It's a passage written by, and this is part of the Warren Commission file, Detective Paul Bentley of the Dallas Police Department. Right? What I also want you to do is I want you to pay close attention to the names of the police officers he names. Because if the case were to go to trial, these are the people who would be called as witnesses. One would assume that the police officers around Detective Paul Bentley would support his version of events. Let me also point out, too, that the type here is a little bit unorthodox. Right? Some of the letters aren't quite on the page. This was typed up in the early to mid-1960s. So bear with me as I struggle through some of the names. Right, This is an excerpt from Paul Bentley that he wrote on December 20th, 1963. Right? On or about. He says, I grabbed the suspect by the neck and attempted to get his right arm. By this time, other officers came to our assistance.
we subdued the suspect and placed handcuffs on him. I took hold of his belt behind his back. Sergeant Jerry Hill was on one side of him. Detective Bob Carroll was on the other side. And Patrolman C.E. Walker took hold of his belt in the front. Detective Lyons also helped to get him to the car parked in front of the theater. I got in the back seat and the suspect was put in next to us and Patrolman Walker got in on his right. Detective Carroll, Sergeant Hill, and Detective Lyons were in the front seat as we proceeded to the City Hall. On the way to the City Hall, I removed the suspect's wallet and obtained his name. He made several remarks en route to the City Hall about police brutality and denied shooting anyone. Right now, that is Paul Bentley's version of events. Lee Harvey Oswald is arrested at the Texas Theater. They get in the car. Detective Bentley takes Oswald's wallet. Now, understand it's very important because, of course, a lot was found in Oswald's wallet including his Alec Hadell fake ID. Well, just understand that there's some corroboration. You have police officer Gerald Hill, who told the Warren Commission the following. About the time I got through with the radio transmission, I asked Paul Bentley, why don't you see if he has any identification? Paul was sitting sort of sideways in the seat, and with his right hand, he reached down and felt of the suspect's left hip pocket and said, yes, he has a billfold, and took it out. After about the time Bentley reached in his pocket and got his billfold, the suspect made the statement, I don't know why you're treating me like this. The only thing I have done is carry a pistol in a movie. Right now, just to understand, books were written about the Kennedy assassination, as you can imagine, and some of these police officers were questioned by authors and researchers. Right? Just be aware of the fact that there was a book called With Malice. And, of course, in that book, there's an interview with Officer C.T. Walker, who rode in the back seat of the police car with Oswald and Bentley after Oswald's arrest. And of course, in that book, Walker contradicts Bentley and claims that he personally removed Oswald's wallet from his pants pocket, not in the car, but at the police station. Right, so you have a different cop, Walker, claiming that Walker removed the wallet at the police station. Let me also point out, too, that Walker was interviewed by the House Assassination Committee in 1978, and he gave his version of events. Now you would think that that's not a big deal, right? Some cop clearly grabbed Lee Harvey Oswald's wallet at the Texas theater. You would think everyone would agree with that. But that's not the case, folks. Understand, there is a film <clears throat> from the Tippett murder, done by a local affiliate, WFAA, right? You want to Google this, WFAA. And in that film, a police officer is holding up a wallet. Well, understand, FBI special agent, and it's a bit troubling, 
Because why would an FBI special agent be involved in the shooting of a Dallas police officer less than an hour after the assassination of the President of the United States? But FBI special agent Bob Barrett was asked to go to the Tippett murder scene. So he arrives at the scene and he recognizes a Dallas police captain. The police captain allegedly says to him, Bob, you know all the crooks in town, all the hoodlums, etc. You ever heard of a Lee Harvey Oswald? According to Bob Barrett, he replied, no, I never have. So the cop continued, how about an Alec Hadell? FBI Special Agent Barrett then responds, no, I have never heard of him either. Right? Well, just understand that the first Dallas cop on the Tippett scene, Sergeant Kenneth Croy, claims that he's the one who actually recovered the wallet. Sergeant Kenneth Croy flatly states that the wallet he recovered was Lee Harvey Oswald's wallet. Right? Understand, on the film, someone holds up a wallet. Right now, Tippett's body is discovered before Lee Harvey Oswald is arrested a few blocks away in the Texas theater. Well, just understand that former FBI analyst Farris Rockstool III has gone to the National Archives and has looked at the film, right? Has looked at the actual wallet in the National Archives and has looked at the film from the Tippett murder. And he believes that based on the appearance of the wallet in the film, he believes that the wallet at the National Archives was the Oswald wallet found at the murder of J.D. Tippett. Right, so understand, the cops who were at the Tippett murder scene, they don't believe the story of the wallet being found at the Texas theater. Right? They believe that several police officers touched the wallet at the Tippett murder scene and that the police, and these are cops believing this, right? the police then had to come up with a story to explain the chain of custody. Right? And so... What I want people to do is I want people to Google Sergeant Kenneth Croy. Croy is spelled C-R-O-Y. What I want them to also do is to Google FBI Special Agent Bob Barrett, right? You also want to add in the search, tip it. Understand, Bob Barrett who did not know Sergeant Kenneth Croy, asked the obvious question. Why would they be asking me questions about Oswald and Hedell if it wasn't in that wallet? Right? You have an FBI special agent who claims he specifically asked if he knew who Lee Harvey Oswald was at the Tippett murder scene. Right, so had this gone to trial, just to understand what would have happened, you would have had several police officers at two different places, the Tippett murder scene and the Texas theater, with differing versions about Lee Harvey Oswald's wallet, right, the wallet in which was his fake Alex Hadell.
identification. Right? Understand the Warren Commission version has the wallet being found in Texas theater and it's contradicted by an FBI special agent. Worse yet, because we have film and you can imagine how the film would play to a jury because we have film. We now have a former FBI analyst saying the wallet in the film is the wallet in the National Archives. Right, so I need for people to understand. We consider the JFK assassination to be some either horrific crime by a crazed gunman or some kind of complicated cover-up that's well thought out, that could survive Warren Commission scrutiny. Right, let me offer another alternative. I'll just say it's a cover-up. But it's not a well-done cover-up. Right, folks? They botched the chain of custody and the storylines concerning Lee Harvey Oswald's wallet. Understand, the police officers at the Texas Theater can't even agree on who took the wallet out of his pants or even where the wallet was taken away from Lee Harvey Oswald. Was it in the car as Detective Paul Bentley claims? Or was it down at the police station as Police Officer Walker claims? Folks, it's 2022, and that is unresolved. Let me also say, too, that the more clouded the chain of custody, the more credibility a skillful defense attorney would have with the jury in arguing that some of the things in the wallet were planted in the wallet somewhere along the line. The police can't give you a clear chain of custody. So the cops don't know what was in the wallet originally when it was discovered by the first cop. Let me also say too that there is a book, Sylvia Meager's book, Accessories After the Fact, The Warren Commission, The Authorities, and the Report on the JFK Assassination. And she points out that the press reports from the first day mysteriously did not mention Oswald's alleged Alec Hadell alias until the day after. Right, folks, you can imagine the Oswald arrest was front page news the first day. Right, understand the rifle used in the murder. If you believe the Warren Commission's report, and I don't, was bought using the Alec Hadell alias. Right, so finding an Alec Hadell alias in Oswald's wallet, that's big news. That would make the accused look suspicious at a minimum. Here, it's not mentioned in media reports for the first day. Now we're finding out that the cop talking in his report to the Warren Commission, right? Again, let me name the page. It's volume 24, page 234. That cop, Paul Bentley, is contradicted by Officer Walker, who's in the car with him. And of course, the cops at the Tippett murder scene, including FBI Special Agent Bob Barrett. Question. Detective Bentley's version of finding the wallet on Oswald at the Texas Theater. Right, folks, the inconsistencies would have made it extremely difficult 
to convict Lee Harvey Oswald. Right? Food for thought. That's how I see it. If you have any information about the Oswald wallet, I hope you leave it in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.